Manchester United, this mammoth of a club, have not won the Premier League for 11 years, barring along the Champions League for 14 years. Now, if you do remember, Jose Mourinho is said to win the Europa League and finish second 2017-2018 season was his biggest achievement. Why? Why is it so? Well, according to research and the global fan base, and according to myself, everything went tits up when Sir Alex Ferguson and David Gill retired back in 2013, and ever since then, we haven't had a proper vision or structure. You see, Sir Alex and David Gill managed to operate on a tight budget under the shackles of the Glazers' ownership, but ever since they retired, we have no structure, no vision, we have been appointing managers after managers with no support whatsoever and the club has been signing players, spending over one billion with nothing to prove for. Exactly what Richard Arnold, the CEO, was saying two years ago. However, 11 years since we won the last Premier League, changes are starting to happen with Sir Jim Ratcliffe's acquisition of the 25% and in charge of the football operations, appointing the best in class people. Now, speaking to the press ahead of United's trip away at Luton, Ten Hag was actually asked, you know, would he welcome a new addition in terms of the new structure to challenge for major honours? Ten Hag said basically, 100% yes, you know. I'm working, I'm happy now, what he said. Uh, in this construction, when things change the way, they will let tell me, they will let me know, Ten Hag said. But he also says that, which is the crux of this story. In a club like Manchester United, you cannot do everything alone. It's impossible. You need to have very good people around you. I'm happy with the club like the size of Manchester United, but I have to look for better, never to be satisfied. Good is not good enough. Always look for the better. Always try to every day to do better what you've done before. So having to say that, we're going to talk about the latest news regarding that structure as we know that Omar Barada has been appointed as the CEO. But we're also going to talk about the Dan Ashford as a sporting director, the latest and latest, the greatest as Jason Wilcox as Player Development Academy, head of the academy. Also very exciting with Sam Jewell as the head of recruitment, meaning Manchester United not messing around meaning Manchester United are aiming to get back to the top as soon as possible. So, welcome back to MUFC Realist TV with your host Mick Ruby. And in this video, I'm going to try to summarize everything that we learned up today. Who is who and what does it mean for Manchester United to get back to winning ways as soon as possible. But before we continue guys to the stories, please make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section because here we go. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MUFC Real TV. What are we witnessing as Manchester United's fans? Not only, only is Omar Barada and then Ashford jumping ship from Manchester City and Newcastle to Manchester United, but Jason Wilkos, former Manchester City Academy director as well, to join. And then Chelsea number one recruitment target, Sam Jewell, to pick Manchester United if Ashwood gets confirmed. You know, Manchester United, they're not just doing slim pickings here, people. <laughs> we simply go for what we deserve to get back into the winning way. So let me just go over quickly to the structure. You know, what is being told right now is new from the press. Omar's is in charge. Omar Barada has provided Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Sir D Dale Bracewell with assessment of the charges need, changes need at Manchester United. This is coming out fresh from the press. So basically, he's already in charge. He knows what he wants. He's got a black book of contacts. He knows what, who he wants to work with. And he has a vision how to bring Manchester United back to the top. He's done it before with Manchester City, with Barcelona, with many, many multiple clubs. And now he is our CEO. What about Dan Ashwood, the director of football? Well, we did a, a long podcast yesterday with me and Bilal Yogi, and we talked about the compensation package. We talked about, you know, that you probably have to sort of pay out a little bit, you know, because at the end of the day, this is a recruitment. You got to give notice period. And, you know, when you go to a competitor, there should be something called garden leave. And 
Latest reports also coming out to say that Manchester United would prepare to wait for Dan Ashford to complete a period of garden leave rather than pay a compensation. United, you're stingy. They feel it's excessive. It's going to cost them a lot of money, but in all nexus, it's going to cost Manchester United to get Dan Ashford over the line. 10 million pounds, what I've been told. But however, it's a contractual agreement. What he's saying, it is pretty much they've spoken to him. Yeah, how much do you want in salary? When can you start? And the rest is down to the clubs to negotiate. Like, you know, will Manchester United pay or will they wait? If you really want to leave the club, if you really want to leave a job, there's no point of keeping you there if you know that you're quitting. So we might see a six months notice period. And at the end of the day, what matters for Manchester United is that we get somebody over the line that can call the shots for the summer transfer window planning. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this story as well. Moving on, this is the breaking news of today. Jason Wilcox, head of academy. Who is Jason Wilcox? Oh my God, exclusive according to the tweet by David Ornstein earlier today that Manchester United is working on a deal to appoint Jason Wilcox as a senior post new set up. It's a new setup. Manchester United is approached Southampton highly rated director of football, but the 52 year old is aware of the interest. Job would be to report directly into the sporting director. So basically he's reporting into Dan Ashwood. And what is the link? They used to work together at Brighton. <clears throat> this is, wow, massive. So who is Jason? Let's have a look at a video. So my career journey today has um, stems back many years to when I was a player for 17 or 18 years professionally. So. He used to be a player first, 17 years professional player. So that is a footballing man already. Then I moved into coaching and then became the technical director. And now I'm the academy director. Academy director, technical director, coaching. He's got it all. I wanted to do something new and I wanted to learn. Being in the role now, there's no degree that can prepare you for being thrust into being the academy director at Manchester City. Throughout my career, again, from the transition to, from a player to where I am now, I think it's been really important that I've evolved my skills. I take myself out of my comfort zone on a daily basis, and I think that's something that I would that I encourage all the staff at the academy to do. When you are evolving new skills, I don't think we should be afraid of trying something new. You know, and the ups and downs of being a player and being able to recall certain situations when I failed, when I got released, when I got dropped. So those experiences now, when I'm seeing the young boys and they're going through, through those similar experiences, I'm able to, to advise them and recall my own experiences to help, to help them. And this is massive. This is massive, people. You know, going through being a player, working as a technical director, coach, developing young players is really really good experience to bring to any club and he's highly rated he was highly rated at city and brought up uh, players like phil Foden, and etc i mean city's academy is huge and then of course he went to a bigger role at southampton and now manchester united is knocking on the door i mean at the end of the day we are building the best in class an academy we know that city academy currently is the best academy in the world manchester united academy has been really really shit lately to be honest right <laughs> we had players we had managers such as a current footballing director <sighs> john murta looking over it as well so that kind of gives you the story in my opinion anything better than john merton and darren fletcher is an upgrade massive massive upgrade that can win you titles and trophies so that's jason we looks for you guys I don't want to dive more into it. This is a short, snappy video. I want to move on to the next target, which is Sham Jewel that was come out as a link today. Me and Bilal Yogi, we spoke two days in a row about Sam Jewel. Sam Jewel is somebody that works magic at Brighton, works under the Serbi. And reports came out today that Anne Ashworth is set to have influence over appointment of Sam Jewel. He's a big admirer, and pretty much if he wants if 
he gets the job, he will definitely bring in Sam Jewell to the stage. So who is Sam Jewell? Well, Brighton recruitment guru Sam Jewell is what they call him. He's a guru, reported to be a target for Chelsea. Chelsea is 100% looking at him. Manchester United is also looking at him. Chelsea are said to have stepped up the pursuit of Jewell uh, to, with Manchester United, I him to assist Dan Ashford. A former technical director of Brighton, now in similar role to Newcastle, but it's definitely on Dan Ashford's radar. We know that Ashwood is talking to Manchester United. You know that he needs somebody to report into him. And the one that he knows is Sam Jewell. So Sam Jewell has been highly instrumental at um, Brighton. Working under Roberto De Serbi, he's really been impressed. Roberto De Serbi says he's a top guy. He's my friend. You know, he said he's the jewel. <laughs> he's the jewel. He's the crown prince of the recruitment here. Um, so... He's been heavily involved in bringing in players like uh, Alexis McAllister, uh, Moises Casado, which they have bought for cheap and sold for significant profits. He's got a pedigree of international flavor. He understands the grassroots leagues. But most important thing, his father is Dave Paul Jewell. He was the Wigan manager as well in the Premier League. So basically, Sam Jewell grew up with football in his family, in his blood. That is amazing. But I'm not going to get giddy at the end of the day. This is some paper talks. But let me know. This is the dream team. Is this the dream team that we need to get back to the winning ways? With Omar Barada at the helms calling the shots, we have footballing operation people. This is a clear structure. We have Dan Ashworth sitting there as a director of football and head of academy player development, potentially Jason Wilcox, and then head of football recruitment, no other than Sam Jewell. There might be somebody else, but you can see how this is interlinked. But at the end of the day, guys, we want to be back where we belong. Is this the formula, what we'd be looking for? Is this good enough or is this just beginning? But at the end of the day, it's far more better than Darren Fletcher and <laughs> Joe Glazer. And excuse me for laughing, John Murta. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we should see you to the next video. Thank you for watching and see you to the next time. Bye for now. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.